everyone. Ryan Young, Kama Jiu Jitsu. And I hope you're doing well. So one of my students, the question he asked me was, what's the value of wearing protective gear? Because uh, he noticed that I don't wear them. Um, I don't wear headgear, I don't wear a cup, I don't wear a mouth guard. Um, why, why would somebody wear it or versus, uh, versus not wear it? Really the thing is, when I started Jiu Jitsu, I wore a headgear, but that was because I wrestled in, in middle school, um, middle school and early high school, and we always wear a headgear. So I just thought, you know, if this is grappling, I'm gonna wear a headgear. I never had any, any kind of cauliflower ear developed at, up, up to that point, but I just did it because I thought I should do it. Uh, but nobody else did in the school, it was just me. That, I, that's the only one I wore, I, I take it back. So I wore a mouth guard as well. Um, I tried wearing a cup once, but didn't like it. So the reason for wearing them, obviously for protection, right? If you wear a headgear, you wanna protect your ears, you wanna have cauliflower ear, uh, because we all know how painful it can be. When the pain goes away, it's kinda jacked up. You know, you're ugly, so your ears all ugly. <clears throat> Do I recommend somebody wearing it? Me personally, it, it, it depends on what your reason for training is. If your reason for training is just for fun and you know and for sport or, or for sport, um, and it's not something that you're thinking as far as a, a self-defense thing, then yeah, by all means, wear it. Uh, just like how when you play football, right? You know, high school football and pro football, they're wearing pads, they're wearing protect, they're protective gear. Why do I say sometimes you wear it, sometimes you don't? <clears throat> well, if your goal in jiu-jitsu is to learn self-defense, then you're not gonna wear it, right? When I learned jiu-jitsu in the beginning, jiu-jitsu was a self-defense art. It wasn't a sport. We would learn it so that we could learn how to fight. Well, the thing is, if I'm wearing a headgear, then now I've got protection on my ears. And I noticed when I, when I was wearing it, actually, I would let things happen to me that I wouldn't normally let happen to me if I were not wearing it. For instance, if somebody went north-south on me and they decided to want to squeeze my head in between their knees, I have a headgear on. You're not going to mess my ears up, right? Um, and I would just kind of just go through it. It's like, yeah, whatever. You want to do that? Fine. It doesn't bother me. I'm wearing headgear, right? That's the wrong attitude to have. It should be where when somebody gets to that position, I'm getting out of there. But because I had a headgear, I didn't care. It didn't bother me, right? If you think about football players, right? A lot of the injuries that football players have, it's because of the gear they wear. You know, they're able to run full speed now into people and have a collision. Your bones might not be breaking, but your head and their, your brain is shaking inside your head every time you do it, right? That's where you get all these brain injuries that they have, these traumatic brain injuries. Uh, but it's because they're, they're under the false assumption that the, the gear is protecting them. So the same thing happens with a headgear. You know, you'll do things, you'll let somebody crank a headlock on you and you'll pull your head out the incorrect way because it doesn't hurt. You know, your ears won't get, won't get injured or damaged by doing it that way. If your whole reason for wearing a headgear is to protect your ears from sport, then yeah, it's a great idea. But if you're, if you're trying to do a self-defense take on jujitsu, on your jujitsu, then, then don't. Right. One way to eat, one way to easily tell is wear a headgear for a month, and then train like you normally would. For the next month, take your headgear off and see how it feels. What you do, all of a sudden you're gonna feel like, oh, that hurts. Oh, my ear is getting hit. Why is that? Because the habits that you did, you with, with the headgear on, are different than what you really should be doing. Now, what about a mouth guard? I wore a mouth guard for a period of time. Uh, probably about a year, but this is when I would go visit Hawaii. My cousin uh, had a student um, named Dr. Berwin Ito, B-E-R-W-Y-N, last name is I-T-O. He's out in Honolulu, Hawaii, and he makes these badass mouthpieces. And these aren't the kind of mouthpieces that you would buy in Amazon. You know, not a wrestling mouthpiece that you dip in boiling water and all that kind of stuff. No, this is molded to your mouth. He takes a mold um, for your top. He can do top and bottom. Uh, mine was just top only. and. Um, once he went, came to fit it, then he would um, he would just go and fine tune the fitment with a Dremel tool, and he would even create a ramp in the front so that you can breathe with your mouth uh, with your teeth clenched and all that kind of good stuff. Um, it was top notch. I mean, it's expensive stuff. But if your teeth, if, if that's how you want to protect your teeth, then then obviously you're you're it's worth it. I worked for a little while and then I stopped, and the reason was because one day I just kind of did an impromptu training, did not have my mouthpiece with me and trained and just like with the headgear it didn't feel right uh, i didn't feel uh, because i was just used to having that in my mouth and at first i wasn't used to that. it was kind of unpleasant but i got used to it and then you know i would probably do some things that i wouldn't do um if i didn't if i didn't wear it so i got myself used to not wearing it again um, a cup who walks around wearing a cup 
who walks around wearing a mouth guard. Nobody walks around wearing a headgear, right? Um, so a cup is something that, uh, you know, I guess you can get hit, hit inadvertently. But at the same time, I don't like it because I don't like when my training partners wear it, only because if they decide to armbar me from the mount, then I have a cup just like jabbing right into my arm and that kind of hurts. So what I do is I just press down even harder. Um, <laughs> Well, you know, if they're gonna if they're gonna put that kind of he's gonna tweak my arm, you know, putting a cup in my arm, then I'll press down on it, right? Uh, but anyway, with regard to the same, it, it comes down to you want to be able to fight, or you want to train to fight, as you would be caught on the street. You wouldn't be caught wearing a cup. You wouldn't be caught wearing a headgear, and you wouldn't be caught wearing a mouth guard. So that being the case, if you're not doing it for sport, then do it without. You know, train without. On the other hand, if you're an active competitor, then yeah, wear all the protection equipment. Protect your ears. Protect your protect your teeth. Protect your um, protect your 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 nuts. Yeah, because it's a sport, and you want to make sure you have all the protective gear on in a sport activity. Because you don't need to worry about getting hit or getting your ears, you know, done a certain way. Um, because it's all about competition anyway. You know, another thing too is. You know, a lot of times people will tape up their ankles or their fingers um, <clears throat> or, you know, because it just kind of helps them train. I know it sucks, but if your fingers get all jacked up, try to not tape them because if you don't tape your fingers and you train, it's going to hurt if you grip a lot. So what does that mean? You'll have to learn how to train without gripping so much. And then that way you can save your hands. It's like I say with the protective gear in football. By you wearing the gear, it just makes you have the ability to put your body under more punishment. On the other hand, if you took the helmet off of every single football player, then the game would change significantly because people wouldn't be running head first um, into somebody. Um, you know, they'd be a lot more careful in the way they do things. Of course, with football, it takes all the fun out without the collisions. Same with hockey, right? Hockey, you wanna see collisions, you wanna see fights. You know, a lot of times they're fighting, but they're covered in gear anyway, so what does it matter, right? If they take the helmet off and the face mask, then yeah, then then, then it'll be a really interesting fight. But when they're wearing gear, then it's it's like two guys wearing those big, uh, big cushions and then banging each other, you know, with the cushions on. Not a big deal. Long answer to the question, to summarize, just ask yourself, what's your real main goal for training? If it's for sport, wear all the protective gear you can get. If you're doing it for self-defense, don't wear any of them and learn how to train and how to be safe without it. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys. I hope all is well. Thanks for subscribing to our channel. Thanks for the likes. And thanks for subscribing to the Patreon channel. We've got a bunch of videos that are gonna be uh, slated to go on soon. Um, after that, we'll be up to about 72 videos. So there's a lot of stuff that Professor Dave is covering that I know will be of interest to you. So go ahead and subscribe and become a Patreon right now. And I got some other news. I'll have another video. Hope all is well. Happy training. Take care. Bye-bye.